Hey guys, what's happening? So, just picked this up on Amazon. It's a, uh, what's it called, like a Black Friday deal. I think I got it a couple days ago before Black Friday, but yeah, incredible deal. This is a Maker Base Monster 8, um, you know, the eight, eight steppers. But this video is actually really about, really about this. Uh, it's actually the first time I've seen these, the Trinamic 2240 drivers. And, um, yeah, there's actually not even a lot of information on Clipper about it. So I don't even know if it's actually built into the actual software yet. So I'll try to get it working in Clipper. Um, but I have a feeling these are going to be the successor to the, to the 2209s. Um, because it can handle a little bit more voltage. So the 2209 can handle like uh, 28 volts, 29 volts. Uh, this one can handle 36 volts. And uh, I think 2.8 amps max current for the 2209s. And these can do three. So they're a little bit more powerful. Um, but the unique thing about these ones is even the 5160s don't have it either, um, is the internal temperature sensor. So there's an internal thermistor in the actual driver. So in case you're overheating these things while you're actually like running your print, I'm assuming maybe eventually what you'll be able to do is basically like lower the current down or slow the print down, like based on the temperature, you could slow down your actual acceleration and, uh, speed. But, uh. Yeah, bigger heat sink. Yeah, I mean, the typical 2209 heat sink is probably about, uh, you yeah, know, one of these last, so it's about three three rows. This one's four rows. Um, we're, we're expensive, so they were, you know, uh, less expensive than a 5160 and a little bit more expensive than a 2209. So it's exactly, they're almost like right in between the two. Um, eventually, I might go to the bigger external Pro 5160s, but. Uh, let me show the parents going in. Yeah, I'm pretty much done with this one. It's uh, called the Orca Super Cube. Um, you know, quad. Well, eventually, the reason why I'm actually got the the, the other motherboard was to uh, I want to do quad quad bed leveling. But uh, yeah, I'm in the final phase of that thing. It's a hundred percent designed new printer from scratch. All right, so let's get this going. Um, I'm actually gonna. I have my my, uh, <laughs> my my test Raspberry Pi is a Raspberry One. Um, well, it's like 2B plus or something like that. I had to fire it up. If all my other Raspberry Pis are being used in 3D printers. So I'm not, I'm not going to run, obviously, prints with it, especially a Core XY <laughs> with Raspberry Pi 1. Um, yeah, I think you should at least have a minimum of Raspberry Pi 2 to run Clipper, um, just because of the amount of RAM and stuff. Yeah, so here's the Monster 8 it's going to go into. Um, so the Monster 8 is... Well, what's funny is MakerBase has been around longer than Big Tree Tech. Uh, before Big Tree Tech came out, I used to use her MKF Gen L. We're talking this is back in the 8 bit days before they had 32 bit boards. That's probably like five or six, five, six years ago, maybe. Not sure. Um, but yeah, it's cool that MakerBase is still around, you know? Yeah, they took a big hit from Big Tree Tech because I remember when Big Tree Tech came out, they went their 1.1 board, SKR 1.1 board. I was like, wow, this is crazy. You know, they really made a lot of advancements and like, you know, being able to control the drivers and stuff. Like, I guess the, the version 1.1, and you actually still had to run the jumper wires. But the 1.3 was, you could do it all internally. They had internal traces. But, uh, all right, I don't want to blabber on. All right, so we're going to go in here. Um, almost everybody running these. I'm going to be probably running for the XY. I'll be running the... Uh, 2240s, if I can get them to work. I don't know if I can get them to work. Um, on the XY, and then the uh, the four Z motors will be uh, 2209s, which I already have. So, um, you yeah, know, like I said, if I can't get these to work, then I'm going to get some 5160s. Um, but actually, like I said, the, the difference is these actually run SPI communication. So they communicate with the firmware via SPI, whereas the 2209s communicate via UART. So... So it's, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like a cross between. It's like a really, you know, it's, I don't know. Like it's, because, like I said, you, the 5160s use SPI too. So the usually the higher end trinamics use SPI. All right, so I have the jumper pin set up for um, SPI. So for SPI, it's all four jumpers. And for UR, it's just a single jumper there. All right, let's get this going. Actually, it's, I have it. Okay, so they, cool, they are indexed there. So originally I thought this was the actual, I guess this is the diagonal pin actually. 
So for centerless homing, that's the diag pin, as far as I can remember. All right, so it also cool thing is it acts like a key, so you don't get them the wrong way. All right, there we go. So it'll be interesting to see. I really, I mean, at this point, if you're not going to be running these things, I mean, you're probably not. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing these are going to be the successor of the 2209, just because they're so close in specs, and you have that added feature. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of 2208s and different stuff in here. That's done. If you can see that in the video. All right, so now I got to hook up my Raspberry Pi 1 here. And uh, I'll hook up to my, uh, my bench power supply right there. Yeah, I have a dead Raspberry Pi 3. That's what you see right there. All right, um, yeah, I know I might be using the Raspberry Pi 3, but it had died. Yeah, the voltage uh, regulator, not getting 3.3 volt. So without 3.3 volt, you're not getting power to the processor. All right, um, all right I'm gonna have to run a jumper to the main wire here. Get some little test environments firing up. Um, I should turn the power supply on for that. Get some power on for that. Um, so now I gotta go into Clipper and compile the firmware for the CPU. Flash it. I'm not going to go into that because it's not. This is more of a Trinamic 2240 drive or video. Um, how to get this thing set up and working. Not really the actual board. I mean, this board is pretty much, I mean, nearly identical to the Octopus. I mean, they're obviously a different layout, PCB layout, but it's the same concept. Just like any other clipper board, you just have more stepper drivers, more inputs, outputs. Um, this actually one that does have CAN bus. You know, I do actually have an EBB 36 CAN bus. So, um, all right, so I'm guessing I'm probably going to have to go into the boot thing at some point, the bootloader. Gonna, well, once you go into bootloader mode, then you can flash it via USB. All right, so we're going to Clipper. I'm going to figure this thing out. Oh, yeah, then I have a stepper, test stepper setup right here, too. So, I got it working. So, I got rid of this one. I was actually having a lot of different SPI issues, and um, I'll, go after, I'll go through my config and how I got it to work. Um, best one I show you is I got the 2209 here and the uh, 2240 here. Uh, one of the cool things I notice, and I'll I'll go through this in main tail, is see the addition to the X stepper here. There's another stepper X, and it gives the actual temp, but the temp doesn't show up on its own. It only it only shows up when it's actually running. Um, let me show you a quick little. Um, so right now X is the uh, see right there. Right there. Yeah, when I tried to actually have this thing hooked up to the SPI bus, but no, I'll go through the config. I'm going to go through uh, an OBS Studio and I'll show you my config. All right, All right so, so now we're back in OBS Studio. This will hopefully be easier to see. Um, yeah, this was quite the headache. Uh, you know, troubleshooting. My issue was I was getting having issues with the SPI communication um, just because a lot of the stuff they actually had, their documentation was scattered. So. Um, so that's what I was saying. This is the addition of the actual thing here, and you're not going to see, I didn't see any temperature, you know, like, with the, ther the thermistor, you see, like, a default, right? I don't have them connected, but there was nothing on there, and this only showed up once the actual driver started moving, or once the stepper started moving. Um, but let me show you, uh, the configuration real fast. Yeah, I tried different SPI buses, and, uh, yeah, it was pretty frustrating. Um, so, like in their own sample documentation, uh, MKS, it's not just, I mean, every big tree checks the same way. Their, their information scattered, it's everywhere. Um, yeah, I just set up one of their CAN bus adapters and it was a headache too. Um, all right, so here is the TMC2240. So, originally I was doing the SPI bus up here, and um, yeah, I tried. In their documentation, they said use four. Four wouldn't work, I'd get an error. So one would actually work, but then I'd get like some kind of, uh, it would partially work, but then I'd get like a timeout and it would lose communication with the driver. So that's where I had this other comment out issue. I was trying to mess with the speed, um, you know, slow down the actual communication speed. Um, but I had to manually define all the pins here, the uh, mostly MISO and the, the, the clock. So, but let me show you where I, and, and most board 
you'll get in most uh, boards you'll get a pinout diagram or you can find one that will basically tell you what you need to know right here so see this right here the mostly four, uh, 14 12 and 13 so that's actually where I got that stuff from um, yeah most boards will actually have that so um, and that, that was my uh, that was the uh, 2209 driver I mean 229s are easy to configure I mean they're always you know super easy just enable UART make sure the right pins correct either enable or disable the uh, sensorless homing. I'm not going to be using sensorless homing, so it actually, I'm not going to be running the diag pin. Even, there is a, even though there's a diag pin defined here, um, I'm not going to be doing sensorless homing. Just for the speeds I'm going to be pushing this printer out, it give me false positives. Um, so that is pretty cool. So this is the only driver, this is the first driver I've seen from Trinamic that actually shows you the temp. And it was actually supported. It was already built into um, you know, Clipper already. But the documentation is not really great. But um, I wasn't expecting this to show up right here. But I thought that was cool that it did. So um, Actually, before I go, I forgot to uh, show you this thing move. Uh, so right now, I actually don't have any end stops connected. So it's going to travel to the uh, max and then basically uh, air out. But pay attention to this area right here where the, the temperature probe is. So right now my it's on X. See right there. I wish this was on twenty four seven. I mean because that'd be nice to be able to see what's actually happening with it. So yeah, see it didn't find an end stop. But all right, guys. Uh, it's what Friday night, uh, Black Friday. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, I didn't see a lot. I I didn't see any of the videos on how to set this thing up anywhere. So um, hoping this video helps somebody. Um, I spent a few hours on it. But, uh, yeah, once you start playing with 3D printers for a while, you're going to realize that all this documentation is scattered everywhere. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a headache, but all right, but it's cool. It's fun. All right. Awesome.